It started as a hobby and it's evolved into a business that includes a lot of my family. I think it's really important to prioritize safety in a tiny house. So when I'm designing tiny houses, I do put a lot of windows in. It was more important for me in life to do something that I, that I love than to have a lot of money. Hi, I'm Shay and this is my modular tiny home. So let's go check it out. So welcome to the kitchen of this tiny house. In this uh, setup, we've got three pieces actually. We've got the tiny house on a trailer, the portable porch, and then we've got what in New Zealand we call a sleep out, which is basically the bedrooms. Um, and there's a few things I really love about this kitchen. One is this nifty pull out bench over here, which goes in and out. You can see extra people around there, which I think is quite cool. I also really love the drinks shelf, um, and that's partly because I really like wine, but I think it looks great up there as a cool little display. A uh, big butler's sink with the wraparound windows, which uh, provides heaps of light, and I just think it visually looks really cool as well. So we just opted for a little fridge in this house because it's going to be a bed and breakfast. So just a small fridge, but we've got drawers, bins underneath the sink, dishwasher, and then a really cool pull-out pantry as well. So you can actually fit quite a lot in there. Something that I really like about the visuals of the space is that we've popped a mirror up above those shelves and that just makes the whole space feel so much bigger and when you look at it you actually see an extra two skylights so it gives the illusion that you've actually got four skylights in here which um, is pretty cool. So we've got a lot of um, a lot of countertop space in here. I want a lot of prep space. I don't like having to move things when you're working in a kitchen uh, and this as well is also um, actually movable so you could you can move it around and you can take it outside if you want as well. So it just adds a level of flexibility to the space, which I really like. Gas burner stove. I didn't put an oven in here because it is an Airbnb. I just didn't think it was needed. And also I didn't want to have to clean it. <laughs> so no oven here. So this is an Airbnb and I've lived in and out of tiny houses for the last 10 years. And uh, I would love to live in this one. <laughs> I think it's kind of an evolution of all the things I've learned um, over, you know, built, living in and building a um, hundred plus tiny houses. It's a modular setup, so the idea is that it can expand as a family grows or as you may need more space. And even as you need less space, as you get um, older, you can, you know, sell a, a component of it if you wanted to. So it's just really designed for a lot of flexibility. And because it's an Airbnb, just with a lot of, you know, luxury as well in this particular setup. So I'm sitting here in the lounge portion of this tiny house setup and the lounge was designed just to be really cozy, uh, to have a telly up on the wall, which we haven't put up yet, but to have a lot of textures and just to feel like a nice place to relax and sit back and watch TV. This portion of the couch is also designed to be wide enough that if somebody needed to sleep there, they could. Uh, there's also storage underneath the couch. So there's, you know, heaps of storage under the entire corner couch and can fit a whole whole lot in that because it's an airbnb it may you know not be used but if it were to be lived in full time at any point you know that extra storage is really handy so we picked all these cushions instead of you know proper sofa back cushion because they can be filled with feathers and they're really nice and soft so when i'm designing tiny houses i do put a lot of windows in and uh, this particular window, I knew it would be looking out onto a beautiful view. Um, and I wanted just to take advantage of the view and, you know, injecting a whole lot of light into the house. So that was, I always knew that would be an important window to get right. So in this tiny house, we've got what we call in New Zealand a heat pump. And that is, uh, I guess, the same as a mini split in the US. It's heating and cooling and super efficient in a small space. So we um, opted to put some artwork in that little corner over there and those are actually kawakawa leaves which you see a lot of in the uh, forest around this house. It's a New Zealand native plant and little piwakawakas which are New Zealand fantails which is a, a bird that you get a, around here a lot as well. Um, so yeah, beautiful little bit of Kiwiana art in the corner there. So I'm the ultimate tiny house nerd. I've lived in different tiny houses for the last 10 years. This is actually our bed and breakfast tiny house, uh, but I do 
wish I lived in it because I love it. So I decided to start living in tiny homes originally 10 years ago because I'm a creative person and it can be hard making a living out of creative projects. It was more important for me in life to do something that I, that I love than to have a lot of money. But in order to make that happen, I needed to keep the costs of my life low. So I decided to DIY build my first tiny house. Um, me and my partner at the time did that. It was a beautiful little greenhouse. We called it Lucy. And um, it was, yeah, the start of a 10 year plus project, which is still going. So I'm not currently living in a tiny house, but I could well be in one again. I love tiny house living, my current partner and my new blended family situation. So we move out of my tiny house, but I've recently just moved it back into our neighborhood and who knows what the future holds. So now we're standing in the bathroom of this tiny house and the bathroom is quite dark but that was done intentionally because we're parked here in what used to be an old quarry and there's a lot of stone and a lot of forest and I wanted that to be um, you know the theme of the bathroom as well so we've got it's actually a real stone veneer as a backdrop behind the LED mirror. We've got like dark, uh, moody tiles and a lot of sort of mood lighting in here, which gives it quite an intense vibe, I think, in the bathroom, but I, I really like it. So the shower size is 900 by 900, which is quite a standard size. And, you know, it feels very spacious when you're in it, especially with the full height ceilings in the bathroom. So going into the shower, we've got a rain head shower, which is really nice to use. The idea is just to make it feel really, you know, luxurious. I know it's a tiny house, but that doesn't mean that it can't be, you know, it can't be an absolute pleasure to use every part of it. So the toilet we've got in this tiny house bathroom is a low flush toilet because we wanted to conserve water. Uh, and it goes to a black water tank, which then gets pumped into the septic tank on this property. So I actually really like this little part of the house and it's quite an important part to for the whole setup to make sense. This is a connector hall and it's built on the portable porch. So it's part of the porch basically. And you sandwich the porch with the tiny house and the pod and this creates what feels like an internal connection between the two of them. So now I'm standing in the main bedroom of the tiny house pod and this is a king size bed and the idea again was to have big feature windows that just you know showcases that and brings the outside in I guess and connects you to the outdoors. So in the main bedroom I we built that really cool headboard so we bought the headboard but set a LED light behind it so at night time that actually looks really really cool. So there's a bit of storage around the corner as well a full height wardrobe you know if you if it was a, full, a tiny house for full-time living we might have prioritized a bit more storage storage under the bed for example you can fit heaps of storage under a bed uh, but being an airbnb we didn't need a huge amount um, so just one nice big storage cupboard so this is just a little hallway between the two bedrooms uh, with storage and shelves to you know store books and other things that people always need the idea again was to keep it really visually attractive so that you know as you enter into the bedroom space there's a little charming nook to welcome you i guess so now we're in the second bedroom of the tiny house pod and you've got a queen bed underneath and then a king single up above. Uh, because of this being a and b we wanted to maximize the sleeping spaces. If it was a full-time house to live in full-time, this could be an extra sofa or study nook or play area for kids, whatever you wanted it to be. We've got extra storage under it as well with these drawers um, and then storage at the back too. And then of course, making the most of storage in the stairs all the time got drawers all the way up so yeah we've got again trying to keep like materials nice and natural and aesthetics quite nice and natural so we've got this beautiful live edge side table so yeah we opted to um, have the screen on the top part for safety like I think it's really important to prioritize safety in a tiny house so if any kids are up there they can't you know fall over uh, but it also provides a layer of separation between the two spaces which I think um, feels really nice as well So from building so many tiny houses over the years, I think we're on to about 150 tiny homes and living in many different tiny homes. Uh, something that's super important to me is future-proofing a tiny house and learning how to come up with designs and build homes that can adjust to the various needs and stages of life so that they truly do become a long-term option. 
um, and that got me onto this modular tiny house setup, which is uh, something that we've just started working on. And that's the tour that you're doing today. So the main tiny house in the setup is nine meters by 2.8 meters. Then the porch that goes next to it is the same size. And then you've got the sleeping pod, which is seven meters by 2.8 meters. Um, and when you combine them all together, it creates you know, a really beautiful setup and you know, the, the outdoor room. And I think it's a layout that would work for families. It can be adjusted um, in time as well. And there's just so many various ways of going about this modular setup to work for so many different situations. So the costs of tiny homes vary so much depending on the country, the fit out, whether it's a DIY build, built um, by a company. But the thing that I like about the modular setup is you can start with one piece of it. Start with one piece, do it properly, do it as well as you possibly can and then add to it rather than having to, you know, build something with cheap materials and materials that aren't going to last. Um, start small and then let it grow is my way of thinking. I'm currently sitting on the porch part of this tiny house setup and the materials I chose for the porch was a lot of timber just to keep it feeling really warm and really cozy um, and to be honest it actually turned out even nicer than I thought it would um, and we added a roaring meg fire wood burner onto the porch part of the house which just makes the most charming space out here like I love just sitting here and chilling and having a drink and <laughs> relaxing it is it's really nice. So the way that we built this tiny house porch and the way that we, we do our porches in general is they're fully aluminium framed so it's one aluminium unit welded together with points that you can raise it, jack it up if you need to um, and transport it with ease. So this post here for example is actually aluminium but we've clad it with timber to give it a really nice um, you know really nice warmth to it but the fact that it is an aluminium framed unit makes it really nice and transportable. So this is uh, another viewpoint of the porch. I put a dining table on it because I thought we're in the North Island of New Zealand so the climate is pretty good out here and people will be eating around the dining table outside most of the time. Add to it that we've got these cool drop down screens and you know that makes this area good for use year round which is pretty pretty cool. So the timber that we've used in this tiny house is cedar on the walls, uh, the cladding of the, the house, but on the porch we've used rosewood decking, which is a, um, a really stable type of decking that we can get here in New Zealand. And again, with the thinking that if, if we do something well and properly the first time, it's gonna last, it's gonna still look good in many, many years to come. So yeah, just we've used really good products throughout the whole build. So we're still in the process of setting up here, hence why there's so much mud. And we've also had the, the wettest six months in New Zealand history. So excuse the mess, but this is uh, the trailer of the tiny house. And in New Zealand, the way that we quite often do it is the trailer can actually disconnect from the tiny house and we can use that to move the porch and the pod as well. So we've got one trailer which stays under the house because that's important because it's where the services are. Um, so to keep it considered as a vehicle, but it can actually move all three parts of this setup, which is um, a cost effective approach or way of going about it. So it's still quite a gray zone in New Zealand as to exactly what different councils want and, and everyone you speak to comes up with something different. I don't know if it's the same in the US. The general view is that if you keep it on the trailer, it's easier with the permitting process in most parts of the country. Um, although there's definitely not one rule for every situation. So if you're thinking about the tiny house lifestyle, I would say learn how to be a minimalist, learn how to embrace minimalism, and it's something that you practice, practice makes perfect. Start following different people on, online who are on that same journey. There's so much to gain from a minimalist lifestyle. You know, tiny house living is one thing, but I think the bigger part of it that brings joy and benefit to life is just minimalism and keeping, keeping things simple and not um, accumulating too much. So I run a business where we build tiny houses. I love it, I love the creative part of it. I love the fact that you know a project is kind of like three months and you get to see something from the idea through to the completion of it. And we get to build so many cool things. So it's a, it started as a hobby and it's evolved into a business that includes a lot of my family, which I love. If you wanna follow us on social media, 
feel free, Shay's Tiny Homes. We post a lot of cool stuff. We post a lot of content on the projects we're working on. And yeah, we've got some cool, cool things planned for the next 12 months as well. Yeah, I think anyone who is interested in the tiny house lifestyle, there's so much to gain from it. So do your research, make sure it's gonna, gonna work for you, learn how to be a minimalist. Uh, and then go for it. Like we don't need a lot in this life, but you know it's nice to have something that's that's our own, something that's yours. Thanks for coming. It was lovely to show you around. I've got sick kids that need me, so I better go. <laughs>